expectations are pretty high when it comes to what Emmanuel Macron can achieve both in France and in Europe. In France, he began with granting himself a presidential stature, which was necessary since he is the youngest ever French president and the first one in the Fifth Republic who never had to run for an election before. He therefore spent his first months in office fitting the presidential suit, as the French say. He multiplied initiatives and symbols that would credit him as the protecting father of the nation. And as the Republican monarch the French are apparently so fond of, he made friends with Canada's Justin Trudeau, shook hands with Donald Trump, resisting the American president's legendary crouching handshake, and he invited Vladimir Putin at Versailles, the symbol of Louis XIV's absolute power. His main purpose was to make clear to his fellow citizens that despite he was a young man, he was fully in charge and he was able to guide and protect them on the world stage, something at the opposite of his predecessor, François Hollande, who presented himself as a normal president. The consequence being Macron might seem to be locking himself in an ivory tower. As for transforming and modernizing France, as he promised in his campaign, Macron already changed the way he relates to the press. His press office is picking the journalists who can attend meetings and press conferences, and he cancelled informal off-the-record chats with journalists. Macron also wants to reform the way the government works and he wants to move fast. He dramatically reduced the number of advisors he and his staff, as well as cabinet ministers, can rely on, putting more pressure on ministers to deliver. There have been reports of a few burnouts within the cabinet. But more than everything, Macron wants to put French economy back on tracks and reduce the chronic high unemployment, even if that means rewriting the labor laws without touching to social benefits and through executive orders. It looks like the biggest challenge ahead, as many of his predecessors learned at their own expenses. Expectations are pretty high in Europe too. François Hollande paid little attention to European affairs. De facto, he left Germany with the burden of leading the European Union alone, even if reluctantly, bringing the EU's so-called Franco-German engine almost to a halt and Europe with it. Moreover, Macron was the only presidential candidate in France to be openly pro-European. This is why he chose the European anthem, Beethoven's Ninth Symphony Ode to Joy, as the musical background for his acceptance speech. Again, symbols. And he really seems decided to move on with having France back on course, leading Europe along with Germany. A few days ago in Athens, Emmanuel Macron set up his vision for the future of Europe. And he said he simply wants, quote, to rebuild the EU, asking its members to show greater cooperation, solidarity and integration within the Eurozone. Of course, words are cheap and only time will say if he will be able to put money and political will where his mouth is.